Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit UMGC.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. America's favorite pets and picnic foods. Coming up with your guess is as good as mine. Right after emails on our random question question. 206-421-ROCK. Uh, you asked a uh, question about a teacher, like looking well, back. Yeah, what, what teacher do you think probably like to throw down a little bit, have a good time, party, drink some beers, whatever? Well, a few people chimed in. They say uh, our junior high shop teacher. He was growing weed in the back of the shop in the broom closet. Right. Dig that. My eighth grade English teacher and her husband, they were busted for cultivating marijuana. Yeah, she liked to party. My high school science teacher grabbed a tall boy at lunch every day. I like this one. Best time ever taking shots with my history teacher. And someone else says I had a history teacher at the alternative high school who would come in super hungover because he was in a band and he'd play late gigs. Well, he let me play Marley and Hendrickson speakers in class. Bless that old hippie. That was a cool thing. Uh, being able to... Uh, yeah, I still lived in my hometown, obviously, after I graduated. But being able to go and legally drink and sing one of your teachers. Oh, yeah. And they're in there throwing down. So it's just like, finally, you're, you know, you're on a level where you're not going to get in trouble. You can have a beer. You know what I mean? It's still so weird, though, Talk man. like a normal human being. You know what I mean? You're not afraid to get in trouble or whatever the deal is. But you have teachers that say, hey, don't call me Mr. So-and-so, and they give you the first name. I'm like, dude, I can't call you that. You know what I mean? That is not how I know. I know I your know. name is Brian, but I know you as Mr. Johnson, it, so I'm going to call you Mr. Johnson. It, it did backfire on me at one point in time. The dean of the School of Journalism, he was a complete alcoholic. I mean, uh, full-blown alcoholic. I don't know if his wife left him. He was an older guy. He was single or whatever. But one night I sat down with him because he was the dean. I was still in school at the time. And, you know, it's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm in the, the journalism department, you know, right. blah, 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 get to know each other. So we drink all night, have a great time. You know, I'm like, he's hammered by the time we're, we're done with the night. But then when he would see me, because he was always by himself at the bar, yeah, like he would just come on over. You know what I mean? Oh, like, oh, like, oh no. No, no, no. What was his speed like? Like when he came over, what he, what did you know you were in store for? Well, I knew that he would smoke. He smoked like 100s, like Winston 100s. All right. I knew he'd smoke like 500 cigarettes. He was always in a suit. Right. You know right. what I mean? It was he was he was always doing mixed drinks. He was just that guy whose glasses, by the time at the end of the night, they're like barely hanging on to the tip of his nose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was just kind of swilling stuff. And right. Started mumbling, and then, you know, it was like 1030, and he'd go home. And this was every time you went in after that? He was, he was in there a lot. I mean, because we would go out every night. So, I mean, he was, sure. he was too random, dumb. Random, random, random. Hello, Josh. Random, Welcome random, to the men's room. Random, 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 Hola. 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 Josh, welcome to the program. Random question, question. Random, 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 random. All right, Josh. Hello. Let's go with this one here. What would you say it was the biggest pet that either you have had or someone that you uh, someone that you know has had? As far as just being huge, like the, the biggest what? The biggest pet. The biggest head. Pet. Pet. P e t. Like a, oh, like a dog. dog. Cat. A pet. Lizard. Although, quick side note. <laughs> quick side note. Who do you know with the biggest head you've ever seen? Huh? Just curious. Yeah. Well, I, uh, my best friend in school, he couldn't wear. It. Hello? Hello. Oh, he's gone. Okay, we might have lost him. Josh, you there? Oh, you here? Yeah, we got you now. Okay, what'd you say? Your best, oh, friend, uh, best friend at school couldn't wear a hat? Yeah, we played baseball with him, and he had to actually cut the back of his hat and oh, tape it. No. Damn! Yeah, <laughs> it was huge. Wow. <laughs> All right, that's a big hat. That's got to be like an eight-something. All right. Jeez. <laughs> that's got to be. So, Josh, who do you know that's had the, the, either you or the biggest pet? Uh, Well, in... Oh, she's gone now, but it's kind of sad. But I had a uh, bull mastiff. Oh, wow. And that dog, I think she was 60, 64, 65 kilos. So, so translate know. that into pounds. About 150 pounds or so? 
Yeah, about about 140, 150, yeah. Okay, and how much food? Like four cups of food in the morning and the four in the evening, or how much did that thing eat? Well, I had to get a little bit creative. I found a butcher um, who would sell me three chicken frames for a dollar, and so I'd feed her two frozen chicken frames in the morning, but then the nighttime was hard because we had to feed her probably four cups of food. Okay. Other one, uh, I had to give her four cups of food at night, but I fed her two chicken frames, so it cut the cost in half. Now, they're considered, they're still, are they medium hair or long hair? Uh, medium. So medium you, to short. Do you have to brush them all the time? Yeah, not not all the time. I mean, she didn't shed a whole lot, but yeah, you had to brush her quite often. How big was this dog's poops? Like, when you took this dog out, I mean. <laughs> Man, I'd fill up, uh, like, a grocery bag probably every week. Okay. Yeah. All right. And was she a gentle? Yeah. Was she a was she a gentle dog? I mean, in nature, did she just want to jump up on the bed and all that stuff? Oh yeah, she was a lap dog. Um, <laughs> they have a tendency to lean against your knee and kind of buckle you a little bit. Um, she was real quiet though. She like she wouldn't bark for nothing, but she'd certainly get quite staunch if she saw somebody come towards a property or something. Okay, I was going to say, did she ever have an issue? Did an animal ever try to be aggressive toward her, and she just kind of kicked her ass? Well, yeah, she actually got uh, <laughs> she actually got beat by like a Staffordshire Terrier, like kind of a like they're kind of short, but they're quite stout. They yeah. got real short legs, uh, probably about a quarter her size. And she was a, she was kind of a well, I was going to say a bad one, but she was a wimp. Like I don't know. <laughs> okay, right. I got that's it. Fair that's fair enough. <laughs> she was a real real cat with it. And how long? How long was the average life on those dogs? Uh, roughly, usually about ten to twelve years. That's pretty big, a, a pretty long yeah. for a most, dog. Most yeah, a big yeah, dog for that size. They, yeah. yeah, they don't, they don't, they seem to to pass on pretty early on. Yeah, I knew a guy at a mastiff yeah. once. I, I just, and, it, and just like you said, man, the dog was so sweet, so kind, so gentle. But you just stared at this thing like, oh my god! I mean, it, it's just, it doesn't even feel like a dog at this point. Yeah, because it's just so large. My buddy had an Irish wolfhound. Live next door. One bedroom apartment. That thing took up the entire apartment. Like a one bedroom apartment? Yeah. And this thing was huge. They're ma- God, they're ugly. They are ugly. They're, they're wiry looking. You yeah. know what I mean? They got a kind of the beard falling off of them. Sweet dog, though, man. It's just like, <laughs> it, it just sleeps You sound all the like time. you're setting someone up on a blind no. date. Got a little bit of yeah. a beard, man. Just big, well, ugly, but sweet. Yeah, Real you know, like you, sweet. You, you would, like, you know how sometimes, like, with a screen door, you, you kind of look in, but you can't see anything because of the reflection, whatever. And I'd go over to Brian's place next door and look in the window, man. And that dog was looking at me dead in the eyes. I'm like, ah! Just standing there. You know yeah, what those I mean? Those things are massive. They are huge. Yeah, they're real big. You have no idea, man. Like, random, he used to random, feed random, him like four random, or five cups random, of food. Random, random, what is the biggest pet you've ever had? Random, Alexander random, and Maria Dmitriev. Uh, there are a couple in uh, Russia. They have been sharing their home on the mountain lion for the past three years. Uh, cats are uh, in the top two most common pets worldwide. But the cat that they have uh, in their one-bedroom apartment is a little different. Messi is a three-year-old cougar. The second largest feline in the Americas, after the jaguar. Jaguar. In the, wall. in the wild, it is considered an apex predator. Yeah. But Messi was born in a petting zoo and has spent most of his life as a house cat. So he basically, he just behaves like an overgrown cat. That's still not awesome. For now. Uh, they are aware that the cat is a predator that will at some point test their strength to establish who's in charge in the house. <laughs> but they have taken steps to keep his wild side in check. They are both trained psychologists. They've always so? loved cats but never dreamed of actually sharing the home with a mountain lion. They do have a hairless sphinx, uh, Kira. <sighs> Uh, had always been uh, enough for them, but in 2018, when they heard that a newborn cougar cub at a petting zoo was uh, ser- in serious need of medical condition, uh, the two uh, went in there and paid for that, and then gave the uh, the cat a chance to uh, to have a new home. I saw the picture. It's just no. And I know they said, look, man, it's just like having a bigger version of a regular cat, but even my cat, right, normal-sized cat, Rainbow Janet, still a predator. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, could still, if she wanted to take me out, I'm sure she's thought about it. But if she's that size, it's done. Is she indoor, outdoor, or just indoor? She's indoor. Okay. She's indoor. Well, I mean, are kids kind of the same way? What do you mean? That they are physically bigger. They'd be more dangerous. Well, sure. based on their mentality. Exactly. Yeah, so if right. you said, look, this is an average two-year-old toddler, right? Just as clumsy and funny and silly and wonder, but they're 6'8", 320. Like, this is going to be a problem. And Ted's exactly right. Like, this this does not make it okay. 
Oh, it's just a big version of an apex predator. No. Random, <laughs> random, <laughs> random. Yeah, it's it's all version, right? Okay. Can yeah. you imagine a massive toddler like that? Think about Throwing it. Throwing a tantrum? Oh, my God, man. You know, when you're trying to pull them away from something at the store. Like, the reason kids are easy to deal with physically is because you're strong. Yeah, because they're miniature. Hey, let's keep walking. And you just pull them a little bit. Six, eight, three bills. Like, no, nah, Dad. I'm looking at the gym. I'm looking at the toys. I don't know, Dad. We're going to Toys R Us. Right. I'm driving. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Welcome to the men's room. <laughs> Hola. Hola. <laughs> All right, Tom. Welcome to the show. Right a question. When I say you eat, Dad. I think we have a few more nuggets on my plate, homie. <laughs> right? <laughs> Why are these nuggets not in dino shapes, Dad? <laughs> All right, Tom, let's go with this one. Uh, you can take this any way you want it. Uh, it could be a physical thing, like you actually caught something, uh, or you actually just caught something. But what did you catch? Uh, I was on the Nisqually and uh, combat fishing over by Mount Road Bridge. And I hooked into probably something like a 50-pound king. And you're like five feet, you're, you're five feet apart. Everybody's five feet apart. You know, it's combat fishing. And I hooked into this king. Everybody reeled in, but everybody there was trying to tell me how to reel it in instead of somebody grab a damn net. (laughs) Okay. And I got it all the way to the shore, and it's like three or four, five feet away from shore. Still, no one has a net. No one has a net. And, And they're all just telling me what to do and this and that and whatnot. And, dude, I lose it right there at the shore. But you did see it. <laughs> Hello, Tom? Yeah, I'm here. I'm I said, here. Yeah, did you see the fish at all? Could you see how big it was? Oh, dude, it was as long as my leg. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never caught a fish that big before. So. Then he sweat, neither did he. Now, I've, uh, did you, catch, you didn't catch anything last time you went fishing. I did not. I got skunked. Tom, I went I caught one fish, which mm-hmm. was not bad. But uh, I don't, I can't, I can't really, I've never reeled in a huge fish before. No, That's not, not at all, been, man. Uh, I've seen people reel in some pretty big fish. And what I caught in the Chesapeake Bay with you guys, that was a pretty big fish. That, that was, was a big fish, yeah. actually. Yeah. Do you guys ever, uh, let me see here, as far as, uh, as far as catching something, you ever catch a foul ball at a baseball game or be able to get a foul ball at a baseball game? No. Major League? Yep. No. Mike? Yeah, it kind of had to let the, the ball was coming our direction. I don't guarantee I would have caught it, but I'm there with probably 12 children. So it's like, you, yeah. you can't be that guy. Mike, did you did you actually get a foul ball? I actually did, yes. Who hit the ball? Uh, Robinson Cano. Oh, I know. You'll, oh. never, you'll never forget who hit the ball. No, Even if they're on the other team or whatever, if you get a foul ball. Were it's you pretty- confident that you were going to catch it? Because when you see those things coming at you, it's a lot different than you see it on TV. I actually didn't catch it. I wrangled it. So the way that it okay. went, uh, we were we were kind of on, on the third baseline in the first section there. The foul ball comes off. And it actually, I thought it was going to go into the next deck up. But it actually hit one of the banners that was there ah. and came ricocheting down. Now, it was in the next section over, but it's a Mariners game, so nobody's there, and I ran over there. <laughs> you got it. By the time I got it, I had grabbed the ball, and there was a, there was about four or five other hands that were descending upon it at the time that I got there. So I didn't, Where did I you, like, talk it. smack? Yeah, but at least you got it from a good player, too. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. got a good player that, 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 that matters. Uh, when are the O's coming to town? Because we're going to those games. Right? Uh, next week, I believe. Is it next week? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Let's do that thing. Uh, the reason we asked, what did you catch? Last time we saw uh, Rob Gronkowski. He was on a boat, which was basically the Super Bowl parade at the mm-hmm. time. And uh, Tom Brady threw him the Lombardi trophy from one boat to the other. And Rob caught that trophy, right? Probably because Tom's like, been there, yeah. done that. Here. He's won the Super Bowl four times. He holds the record for the most touchdowns by a tight end in a single season. And is considered one of the best ever to play a tight end in NFL history. And now, uh, Rob Gronkowski is a Guinness World Record holder. The Buccaneer tight end... Tide. Caught an American football, dropped from a helicopter, hovering 600 feet in the air. That breaks the record for the highest altitude catch. Uh, He returned to the University of Arizona. That's where he went and played uh, uh, college ball to achieve the feat. He donned pads, helmet, and a jersey with his old number 48 on it, which is uh, what he wore in college. After struggling with the first two attempts... Uh, Gronkowski caught the third and then did the Gronk spike on the ball before uh, being swarmed by the current Arizona players. Every time you step on the field, you got to raise that bar to another level, baby. And I just raised that bar to this level, baby. Uh, the record-breaking feat will uh, see his name entered into the Guinness Book of World Records uh, uh, for the uh, biggest catch, 600 feet in the air. What do you think that feels like when it hits your hands, man? 
I mean, it probably hurts. I'm sure it does. With that said, I saw a uh, female cricketer do this two years ago. Same thing. They took a helicopter and dropped a cricket ball out, and she caught it. Well, the her. How much do it, those things weigh? I mean, is it like the size of a baseball? You have any idea? I've never actually the touched The difference one. between Definitely. that, though, honest to God. You never touched cricket balls? Well, no. you haven't lived. We, we played with whatever ball we had. Of but course. It wasn't an actual cricket ball, but I'm pretty sure they're hard and more like a lacrosse ball. Jeez. Yeah. So if you miss the opportunity to catch that ball, if that thing hits you on the top of the head, forget about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the difference. Like yeah. a football, it might knock you out. It right. might leave a, a bump or a bruise. But it's inflated. You might be like mildly concussed. I mean, you got to think about some of the headers the guys in the Prem League take when those what? balls are zipping over there at 70, 60 miles an hour. Well, and the Gronk the thing's middle. funny, too, is I think he's down there coaching the spring game. They had ah. him and another alumni. And then they're like, he comes out in pads, like setting a record. Yeah, I'm going to break the Guinness World Record for the ho- for the highest ball con. Your cricket ball is going to be 5.75 ounces, so about a third of a pound. About a third of a pound. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so it's like the size of a bird. So not bad. bad. Uh, bad. By the way, so many of you guys are talking about fishing and your ability to catch things or not. Or not. I like this guy. He says, man, every time I've gone fishing, I've always caught a buzz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to catch you know what? 100% I, of the time. I had to use that line last weekend. After about hour three of not catching anything, I was like, at least I'm catching a buzz. <laughs> Did you get any bites? I think so. Look, I'm not making excuses, <laughs> I so. but I have never fished for trout before. So it felt like there was something on there a couple times, but... I never got one close. Was there bait when you reeled it back in? Uh, there was definitely a 45-minute period where they kept taking my bait. Okay. Oh, oh Dan, you're just feeding oh. fish. That, that was the whole joke. I'm just out here feeding them. <laughs> More of the random. They'll be bigger next time. For the random question, question coming up, 206-421-ROCK. 99.9 KISW. Yay! You're in the men's room. Radio.com is now Odyssey. Download the Odyssey app and listen to KISW in the men's room anywhere, anytime. Odyssey, A-U-D-A-C-Y. All right, it is our random question. Question 206-421-ROCK. Random, random. Hello, random, Dave. Random, welcome random, to the men's room. Random, random, Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hola. Hola. Dave, welcome to the program. Random, random question, random, question. Random, random, All right, let's go with this already. one. Dave, who got back and who? Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. I'm Glennon Doyle, author of Untamed and host of the podcast, We Can Do Hard Things. Each week, we talk openly and honestly about the hard things in life together with you. So join us and some of our dearest friends and greatest heroes to talk about anxiety, boundaries, parenting, infidelity, our bodies, loving and losing, all of the things that make us human. Listen to and follow We Can Do Hard Things on Odyssey and everywhere you get your podcasts. And why did they get back at them? What did they do? Mm. <clears throat> wow. Like my buddy got back in his cat is... <laughs> Cat pooped on his pillow because he hadn't cleaned the litter box. That pissed him off, so he went and pooped in his cat's litter box. Yep. My roommate was eating all the food in our home, so we decided that we were going to make some Alpo chili one night and uh, just leave it on the stove, put it in the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. He ate like two bowls of it. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say it was nothing directly that I did, but uh, years ago when I was in college and you know working in a restaurant, it was a gal I worked with for several years, and she was, very, you know, really attractive. But she was going out with the uh, uh, the lead cook, who's a Hispanic guy. Uh, we all got along real well; everything was fine. And then uh, I guess she tried to make him jealous once, and told him that her and I hooked up. And then he came to the restaurant one night that he wasn't working and he reached out to like shake my hand and instead he grabbed my thumb and bent it backwards. And I was going, what the hell is going on, dude? You know, he explained it and I said, well, that's not true. You know, I said, she's lying to you. And he got all pissed off and then he left the restaurant and then I went out after closing that night and 
him and five buddies were hanging out there, they had a few beers, and they were waiting for me to come out, and they tried to beat the crap out of me. And uh, it got ugly, but uh, ironically enough, the next week, he was driving somewhere in his Volkswagen, and uh, he drove head-on into a big rig. Jeez. Jeez, Liz. Okay, don't wow. mess with Dave. There's the happy ending we're looking <laughs> right, for. Exactly. My God. You know, oddly uh, enough, a week later, he's he drove head on into a truck. <laughs> uh, and I sort of sleeping with this girl. I uh, wrote this question down yeah, for this story. The curveball. I wasn't expecting that story. Yeah. Not with such a cheery demeanor. This might not have been the right question for the story because I'm not sure exactly who was trying to get back at anybody. But uh, back in 2019, Conor McGregor from the USC mm -hmm. uh, UFC, he walked into the Marble Arch Pub in Dublin, Ireland, and tried to buy everyone a shot of his new whiskey. Right. Okay. The name of that whiskey is Proper I'm, Number Twelve. I just saw it on the shelf the other day. Proper Number Twelve. That's it. Unfortunately, I've heard people say it's pretty good. I'm, like you want to hate it, mm -hmm. don't you? Yeah, because I hate him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, an older gentleman. Yeah. He turned. I hate him. him. He turned him down. He was just happy drinking whatever he normally drank, right, right. and he just didn't want to. He didn't want to drink that stuff. So, so Connor did what any normal person would do, and he punched him in the head as hard <laughs> as he could. <laughs> uh, they ended up, by the way, reaching a private settlement with a guy, and uh, also he had to pay a fine. But that's not where the story ends. Connor McGregor just bought the Marble Arch Pub in Dublin, Ireland. And he said the guy that would not drink his booze is now banned from entering the bar. <laughs> That's such that a is douche. a true story. That is such a douche move, I have to respect it. I mean, like, it's annoying, it is ridiculous, it is petty, and I'm not above it at all. If I had the money, like, you know what, Ted, F you, man. Yeah, I bought that bar you go to all the time. Mm -hmm. You're, you're banned. You're not allowed in anymore. Yeah, I mean, I like pettiness, but I just hate him so much. I know you hate him, but say it was just somebody. Say it's George Well, the guy Clooney. didn't do anything. He was just in there as a patron. He was just right. having a, a drink, and then he gets punched in the face by turning down a drink. So he didn't do anything. And now, I mean, yes, he got a settlement out of that. Because he got punched. he's banned from the place that he used to go to <laughs> just because he's like, man, I don't, it's okay, man. Because Conor McGregor went to him like two or three times. Right, and well, Thrill's talked about this, too. Also, it's just different culture. So, like, in Ireland and England, it's a big deal, like, that's your pub. That's the one you go to. That is your yeah, pub. Whereas that I is, feel like as an American... We bar hop. Right. You got like five different go-to bars that you go to. Just close enough for they even do like yeah. a pub crawl in England. The pub crawl is from your pub to your home. Right? Yeah. I mean, that mm -hmm. is your spot, man. Yeah. God, it's such random, a douche random, move, but random, random, honestly, God, it makes random, me chuckle, random, man. Like, random, <laughs> random, <laughs> I wish random, I had enough money random, to be that pub. Random, 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 and I really yeah, do, man. Because there's like... You go to the bar every once in a while. There are certain regulars to certain bars. Maybe you don't get along with them. Like, hey, guys, good looking out. I just bought the bar. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, you're banned. Because every time I come in, you tell me a sob story, and I'm sick of it. You say things like, guys like us, you can't be here anymore. I'm trying to think. There's only like one or two people, but I would definitely do it. There is. By the money, faux show. Sure. Yeah. Hello, Chuck. Welcome to the men's room. Oh, Chuck, welcome to the program. Ran a question, question. I think I got one here that you can answer. Chuck. All right. When was the last time that you saw unexpected penis? <laughs> <laughs> unexpected penis? That is correct, sir. Okay, I want to make sure I heard you right. Yes. Um, actually, last week. <laughs> last week? Last week. Um... So my family was on vacation down in Palm Springs, staying at a resort, and our uh, condo was kind of overlooking the pool area, and there were two uh, addicts, transients, at the bus stop, and they were kind of just, full, you know, getting a little weird and tweaking out. My wife and I are just on the back deck, like, having a glass of wine, like, look at these idiots. Well, they come over towards the resort and hop the fence, and they're tweaking around the pool. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? They both strip down butt naked. <laughs> and we're literally 50, 70 feet away from them, and they have no idea that we're like, what the hell, are they, like, watching. Was that pleasant and so, for your wife? Go ahead. Was that pleasant for your wife? Uh, no. Okay. No, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> right. It wasn't anything good for, I mean, I, I, the, the female that was there, she also stripped out butt naked and it was like, hey, you know, not too bad. She had a uh, perky rack. Okay. Well, it's Palm Springs. <laughs> did, did you point that out to your wife? 
Say, you know, she does she have a perky out to me. Okay, all right, all right. Sure, she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she didn't make any yeah. comments about the gentleman. Oh, we both laughed about the gentleman. Okay, I've found that he was maybe five foot five and probably a hundred pounds, and you know his uh, his equipment matched his stature. Okay, all right. okay, Ooh. all right. Kind of like Ted. Nope. She <laughs> just had to get it in, didn't? Wow. You? <laughs> well, that? Ted went after my guy Connor, so you know I gotta. Oh, oh yeah, I Connor see. needs you to yeah, protect yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you got his back. I'm make yeah. jokes and someone busts. I do want to give you guys a recommendation. Okay. If you ever go to Palm Springs, there's a place called the Bank Dispensary and Lounge. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you buy whatever you want and can enjoy it right there. They just opened when oh, we nice. got down there. Well, so, so they, have like a, a they have a deck outside. Establishment. Does that mean they have a deck outside? No, it's indoors. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. In, yeah. Uh, you I can not uh, play that. pool and uh, have your doobies and or play video games. They have a stage now for uh, for shows of when they're allowed to have the shows. Oh, man. So video games would be... I, I would be down for that. can't believe Vegas doesn't have that. You would think... Give you it know, time, man. Do they not give have lounges you can smoke in? I mean, marijuana? I don't know. Well, that's, I mean, look, it's legal in Washington State. I don't know of a place where you can go and smoke weed in a lounge. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, maybe in a casino you could. Well, it's no, it not weed. Depends. You can't do it in a casino. Not a casino. I don't believe. Huh. And by yeah. the way, uh, unexpected penis. Some people say, a uh, guy says, I work corrections. I see them all the time. More than I would like to see. Someone else says, I saw an expected penis when my brother sent me a picture of the bruising. From his adult circumcision. Ooh. And then someone else points out that Unexpected Penis would be a great band name. They'd be a punk rock band for sure. Dude, I saw some Friday. Unexpected Penis? Yeah, this dude was just sitting at a, there's like some tables set up, right? All right. So, you know, different type of people you sit at the tables. Sometimes it's people getting tacos at the taco stand. Sometimes it's just kind of random homeless people. And he had an empty bottle of juice. I was like, ah, I wonder what he's doing with the juice. When it came out, he was just sitting there at the table peeing in it. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm just straight up peeing. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I had downtown Seattle like five, six years ago. There's a new hotel there now, but at the time it was a bagel shop, right? So I go in and put in my order. Now I'm on the phone, so I roll out of said bagel shop, and I'm just standing in an alley. And I think I'm talking to my wife or something. And this dude, he looks like Aqualung, the cover from Jethro Tull, mm -hmm. right? He looks like that. And he's clearly, he's going to this alley to pee. The thing is... His penis was already out, so he just pops into view, and it looks like an uncooked hot dog in his hand. I'm like, oh, no. dude! It's like, ah, oh, sorry, sorry. So he did me the courtesy of turning his back and peeing like five feet away. I like my hot dogs cooked. Yeah, yeah it's just like, please, please, Cut man. down the middle and fry. Uh, guys, the reason we asked, uh, when's the last time you saw unexpected penis? For years, Aprila Manganang and the Indonesian Women's Volleyball Association have been fighting off accusations she was actually a man. But this year, she was finally confirmed to actually be male. Members of the Indonesian National Women's Volleyball Team, uh, which she is a part of, played in several local club teams in Indonesia, as well as Thailand. Now, she led the Jakarta Electric Women's Team to become the champion in 2015, 2016, and 2017. Then in 2019, she became a champion again with the Jakarta team before transferring again to another Thai volleyball league and winning the championship in the same year. She won multiple Most Valuable Player awards in her career, helped the Indonesian national team win the bronze and silver, uh, silver medals at several editions of the Southeast Asian Games. But her amazing achievements were always put into question because of how she looked. She has big shoulders, a muscular physique, flat chest, and a visible mustache. Aprilia <laughs> was never the most feminine volleyball player. Her nickname to soar into the air and smash the ball into the opponent's half won her the nickname Monster of the Vertical Jump, but also fueled more allegations about her true uh, gender. Now, before the 2015 games, volleyball officials protested and demanded she be subjected to a gender test, but the Games Federation Medical Committee uh, ruled against it. Well, turns out that uh, just recently she had to be checked out again, and it turns out that she was, in fact, uh, a man. According to the Independent Observer, when she went to the Army Hospital, there were clear indications that she was not actually a woman. Like a penis. <laughs> That's the first clue. Due to limited testing equipment at the hospital, she uh, was sent to another Army hospital for further checks. And the Army's official statement was pretty clear. Today I went to a uh, convey information about one of the Army soldiers. Uh, the second lieutenant, uh, sergeant, that we were speaking of, uh, is not as lucky as all of us. When she was born, this child had uh, abnormalities in the reproductive system. Uh, it's called uh, hypospadias. 
From the results of the examination, it turns out from the urological examination that she has male sex organs, does not have any female internal organs. And her hormone Give testosterone was also <laughs> measured, and it was found that those levels fall way into the normal male category. Right. So, so they gave a physical to a guy, and the conclusion that they reach is that the guy is, in fact, the guy. And, and Ted, you pulled up the picture, right? Yeah. Because I said, like, look, you, you look at this person, you're like, that's a guy, right? Ted pulled up the picture. He's like, yeah. That's a dude. So think about these officials back in 2015, right, before he, she, whatever you want to say, started the championship run, they're like, hey, man, we are demanding that you do a gender. There's no way that's a chick. And they're like, no, 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 no. So here you are six years later, like, right. The giveaway was the bulge in his pants and the mustache, guys. Did nobody ever shower with their teammates after I, a I game? I don't know. Or maybe the teammates yeah. were like, look, we keep winning. Who cares? We're not, you know. I mean, like, I can't imagine it, like, that would be the case. but Right, like, that's to sound weird, but even with... Even if he had, like, tiny little equipment. Like, you can right. still tell that it's yeah, not a no, 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 uh, But speaking of unexpected penis, sadly, a lot of people chiming in about that. Uh, it says, I'm a bus driver. I see nasty penis on, guess what street? Third. Third <laughs> Avenue almost so easy. every day. Yeah. Someone else mm -hmm. says, on the subject of unexpected penis, I work for the DOT in California, and we were, goddammit, we were picking up a job site, homeless guy, started pleasuring himself across the street from us. Unexpected penis at the grocery store in Lakewood. What? With my 14-year-old daughter, guy has his arms full of items, walking toward us in the aisle. His pants fall down, and he's wearing no underwear. So the guy wasn't trying, but uh, uh, so I saw a guy, this was years ago. I'm on the bus in Baltimore. The bus is packed, man, and there's a, there's a dude who looks like Apollo Creed, basically. He's got the muscle shirt on, kind of built, little fro, mustache, and at that time, you're wearing much tinier shorts, all right? So as the bus gets packed... All these different people get on, and he's being the gentleman, which I can't explain Baltimore, but, like, they'll shoot you dead for nothing, but you need to have manners, right? Go figure. Okay. <laughs> so, seriously, it makes no goddamn sense. Uh, but he let this woman sit down in the seat that he was previously in. She says, thank you, whatever. Her husband sitting like a row behind her, but on the other side, okay? So he can't see through the wall of people that are standing on the bus. And the bus is now rolling down the road. And I realized that the Apollo Creed looking dude, the bottom of his penis is hanging out of his shorts. Okay. And he does not realize this. But because of the way he's standing, every time someone was getting on or off the bus, you know, it was kind of a crush of people. Mm -hmm. So he has to press in. And I realized his junk basically is touching the cheek of the woman that he allowed to sit down. You follow me? Okay. So she's he, so he's not doing this consciously. He's not doing it. I mean, he has no idea, right? And I get wind of this and I'm like, Oh my God, his penis is hanging out, but it keeps hitting this woman in the face, but no one's saying anything. So I kind of nudge the guy next to me, and we're complete strangers, and I just do a real quick point. So now we're both trying not to laugh, but we can't stop staring. Mm -hmm. Because every time someone moves, he keeps putting his hips into this woman's head, which is what you do. He just. Right. But then the woman gets wind of this, okay? And you can just see her reaction. There's like a, you know, like when you're kind of startled by something. Yeah. All right. So unexpected penis. She, right. Unexpected penis. Exactly. So she, she kind of has this jerk reaction. She doesn't want to say anything. She doesn't want to embarrass the guy. But as people are going by, she's now pulling her head farther and farther away from the guy. Then she stands up and offers the seat back to him. Keep on the bus just rolling down the road. He can't understand why. And he's like, no, 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 man. You, you can have the seat. It's fine. She's like, no, I'd, I'd really prefer it if you sat down. He's like, no. And this goes back and forth. Finally, he's like, yeah, uh, all right. So he sits down. And now she gravitates a little bit closer to her husband. Now as the bus is rolling down, me and the dude I'm sitting next to realize that Apollo Creed has figured out the situation. <laughs> because his shoulders jerk just like hers did when she realized that, mm -hmm. that his penis kept brushing her face. You see him like, oh, no. <laughs> And he had an Errol's Video Club bag. You remember those? Uh, the yellow yeah, bag? The yellow one. So he, yeah. So he kind of adjusts this on his lap, and you can see he's doing the best he can to tuck his D <laughs> back out of view. But it's a hard pull, man. There's like a yeah. hundred people on the bus. Everyone's sitting everywhere. I think he finally got his stuff together. I couldn't no tell. Intended. But me and the other <laughs> dude were dying. I'm like, man, this guy's penis is hanging out of his shorts. He's been bumping this lady said she had it had to be like a good three miles. She has no idea. And it's stupid, but it's like one of the most fascinating bus rides. Like mm -hmm. I can't stop what I've never stared at another man's penis this long in my life, but the fact that he keeps bouncing off this woman's head, man, and she has no idea, like I can't pull my eyes off. Mm -hmm.
I saw a guy in my front yard just peeing the other morning, probably <laughs> four months ago. Oh, no. Pouring down rain. I go outside and smoke a cigarette. I look down and there's this guy in my yard. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, he zipped up his pants. He jumped around. I'm like, he's like, I'm sorry, man. He's like, I think he might have been a delivery driver. Right. He's like, there's nowhere to go. Oh, Why is um, it always your yard? Because there's a fence that goes around the front, so you could you could jump in there real quick. It's very convenient. And, you know, kind of be out of view, but you're still... It, like, I have a table there and chairs and things. Didn't you have a woman trying to poop in your yard? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Did she poop at all? Or she, did... she pooped because... Uh, <laughs> she got it done. Yeah, because they were having... She and a group of her friends were having a conversation at like 1.30 in the morning, and it was basically just like... Yeah, they either were told to leave the bar or they closed the bar or whatever, but she had to go. Right. So, like, come on. You know, we can make it. Like, you hear all this stuff going on. Because it was the middle of the summertime. I had my windows open. Yeah. I have the screen door open. Like, I'm hearing this. Like, they are in my bedroom, right? And then all of a sudden, I hear my wife just scream, like, she's taking an ass in the yard. <laughs> what do I do? And I was like, throw a roll of toilet paper? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe give her a poop bag from the dog. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not picking it up. You know what I mean? like, and, of course, the next day, there it is, sitting there. They just like hose in the it from the sidewalk. Yard. I took a dog bag and picked it up. <sighs> God. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> I mean. I tied it up, threw it in the trash. I mean, I guess you got to deal with it, but, like, man, I don't want to do it, but it's in my yard. Mm-hmm. Your guess is to go to my code of the categories will be the top 10 pets in the United States and the top 10 picnic foods. You are listening to The Men's Room.